Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here, and today I'm here to talk to you about the new Evo 8 interface from Audient. Now, Audient sent this for review, so thank you to Audient, but full disclosure, I'm not being paid for this review. This is my own thoughts and my thoughts entirely. And long story short, it's great. I mean, yes, uh, it's limited in what it does in some ways, but that's just because of the nature of this interface and this category of interfaces. This is a four input interface with four outputs uh, no frills nothing really particularly like no extra sp diff or crazy inputs and outputs or weird stuff that's it all four inputs are microphone inputs that can do line level as well all four of those inputs can all run individual phantom power which is really impressive because this is all run off the USB cable. This is bus powered, which means that if you've got a MacBook, modern MacBook, plug this in, it'll just work, no extra cables. If you've got a PC, laptop, or other kind of Mac, it also comes with a USB A cable and will just work. As for the specs, it is exactly the same as the Evo 4. I already did a video on the Evo 4, which if you look at this uh, card in the corner here, you can check out that video. Uh, because in that I go through putting these through their paces, uh, the very impressive signal to noise ratio for a USB powered interface. Uh, the latency is entirely reasonable. And it has the really funky smart gain feature, which again, I've already covered. It's uh, very useful. It's quite small, as you can see. It's a small little black cube, which is worth talking about because I've had this unit for a few weeks now. I'm taking it out of the box, but I've had it at home in my office where I do some recording. I do a lot of editing, as you can imagine. That's a lot of what I do. Um, and this has been really, really useful because my office isn't very big. And a lot of the smaller USB interfaces, they're kind of, they're shaped like a breeze block. You know, there's, they're shaped like they should go in a rack, which makes sense if things go in a rack. But otherwise, I've got a big flat surface that's taking up all my desk space. This little cube is not very big at all and it's got one big ring of LEDs around the volume control and that's it and that means that you've not got lights here lights there uh, the the buttons all do light up so there's no need for extra lights and dials and the only reason that most of these light up is so that you know which one you have selected because the big knob in the center is the only physical control really uh, so if I was to press number one that's input number one is now chosen and then 48 volts is on a, a button in the corner which if you turn that on it goes red and then there's the question of gain how loud do you turn it up now um, I again going back to the Evo 4 video I'm gonna reference this several times uh, there's a green button here so I press smart gain so I press the green button press the channel that I want to do smart gain on, and then make noise. And after several seconds of making noise, it then works out how loud it should have that channel turned up without uh, distorting, without clipping, or getting anywhere near that. So you don't have to be an engineer. Uh, you don't have to know exact things like, you know, minus 18 dB RMS and all these weird and wonderful numbers that we throw at each other. Not least because nobody can agree, but also because it just makes, you know, this makes life easy for everybody. Uh, if you don't want to use the smart game feature, you just tap the, the, the number of the particular channel and then just use the knob to turn that up. Uh, then there's output one and two, which 
are here, which are stereo pairs, of course, because there are four outputs on the back. And you click one of those and then turn up and down the knob and that will change the volume of that one accordingly. There are two headphone outputs which are attached to one and two output there, which means that you can have independent volume for a singer and a mix engineer, perhaps. Now, there are so many re reasons that I would want this particular interface. I do some quite mad recording sometimes, especially for someone who already has a studio. I There is a DI inbuilt to these, and it's very low noise and very good, but I am a stickler for using an external DI box. Uh, always have done, probably always will, it's just a habit. Uh, but because of that, I can use, say, say, say I use channel one for a DI box for a guitar. Uh, then I could process that signal in Cubase, Pro Tools, Reaper, what it, whatever it is that you use. Then I could send that back out of output three because one and two are being used either for your speakers or for your headphones. Output three then could then send that to something back to a real amp. And then you could have that blasting out into two or three microphones that all go into inputs two, three, and four. Do this all at the same time live. Or I could have uh, one artist that's got one mix, one artist that's got another mix, have uh, two microphones on two guitars and two microphones on two vocals. So this is really, really useful for most engineers in a lot of cases. Um, I was saying recently to uh, the people in Discord, John is on the Discord, by the way, for further chat, that generally in my experience, engineers either need two channels or maybe four channels or lots of channels. Those generally are your three choices because if you go beyond four, again, in my experience, there are exceptions, sure. But generally, once you get above four, you tend to be talking about recording either drums, which can get to a lot of channels, or a full band, which again, lots of channels. I tend to use between 16 and 24 here at any one time if I'm recording a live band. And yeah, you're not going to get a small factor interface that's going to do anything like that. But then here comes Evo with this four channel, which is again, I could record two microphones on a guitar cab and two other instruments entirely. Maybe I'm just throwing out possibilities here. The preamps are clear. Uh, you can crank the gain up and they don't get noisy, which is really impressive again at the price point, which brings me to my next point. The price of these things is ridiculous. So the Evo 4, when that came out, the price is around £100, so 100-ish euros, 100-something, 100 $120 plus tax, whatever that is, a uh, rough guess, which was reasonable. Not the cheapest interface you're ever going to get. There are other companies that could you know, hit a lower price point, but the Evo 8 comes out at £160 or something like $180 plus tax. For what this is, that's very impressive. I don't think I've ever seen an interface that fills this market gap at this price point and does it well. Companies like uh, Focusrite have done uh, interfaces in the past that claim to have four inputs, but generally it's like two microphone inputs and two line inputs, which means you then have to go out and start paying money for extra preamps at which point the whole idea kind of falls apart unless you've got a very specific setup. And beyond that, you start to look at eight channel interfaces and even the entry point price for eight channel interfaces. You're looking at 250, 300 or more just for something fairly basic. Or you're looking at getting an interface that's got an SP diff or eight and ADAT in with eight channels of extra input. Then you're spending money on the preamp bank. Oh, then that gets complicated. And Audient do things like that. They have the ID 14, the ID 22 and 44, which are more, more optical inputs. They're a different animal, really. They're for that engineer who wants more inputs and still have that quality but then you don't get the like smart gain features and that kind of thing one two one two one two
This is the SM57 with, uh, you can actually hear my breath because there's no uh, uh, pop shield on this, but um, that's where an SM57 has an inbuilt pop. But if you listen very, very, very closely, you can hear the tiniest bit of background noise. But I would have said that most of that background noise is actually this laptop that's what 18 inches away from from the microphone and that's with the gain on the Evo 4 absolutely cranked so that's quite impressive this is like I said right at the start of the review much more simple so I, I know I've been using sound clips from the Evo 4 here but this is the exact same design inside so if you've heard one you've heard the other and at the price point I really wish things like this were out when I started recording I had a, a Tascam 4 channel interface I don't mind dropping the name Tascam because this was almost 20 years ago at this point so it was absolutely shocking but that's no reflection on what a company does now you know that that was the state of play at the time and it didn't have good uh, preamps the noise flow was terrible it didn't even provide phantom power at all uh, it didn't have four inputs even though it claimed to be a four channel in, uh, interface it had two and two sp diff and even then yeah the mic pre's were terrible um, this is the modern state of play for anyone who wants to be serious about audio but doesn't have tons upon tons of money hope you found this useful um if you are going to get one of these there is a link in the description below where that would help us out it's an affiliate link if you were going to buy one anyway um, again i i do recommend these and the the proof of it is that this is going to stay on my desk at home obviously it's not going to be any use to me here because I've got this but having said that I have audience preamps in the rack there and they get used on a daily basis so that's a testament to the quality of audience gear this is going to be in my home recording setup and if you ever see our weekly podcast this will provide the uh, voice for that and Anything that I record at home using DI's or if I've got an amp and a load box because I've got the Captor X That will all be going into the Evo 8 And so yeah, this is the last time that you are going to see this anywhere near its box Because it's going to be on my desk Until some kind of Mark II version comes along whenever that will be I mean now the onus is on other uh, audio interface companies to come and impress me with something that is better for the price point so guys I'm looking at you uh, but yes um this is going to be my go-to now so yeah I can't re recommend it any higher than that hope you found this useful thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video coming up very shortly we've got um, reviews of the Adam S2V monitors, which are just there, uh, which have been sent on loan from Adam Audio. So that's interesting. Uh, I've got lots and lots of weird and wonderful stuff to do with guitars and production coming up. Uh, I think this should be released before Black Friday, which means Black Friday deals are coming soon. There's all sorts coming up and it's going to be a great couple of months. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Hole Studios. See you there.